Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I'm from executeautomation.com and welcome to part 3 of our Cucumber with Selenium video series. And in this video, we'll be talking about page object model with Selenium and Cucumber. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 1 and 2 since this part is going to be a complete continuation of that part. Alright, so let's get started. Let's all help to save tree, water and energy to save our motherly planet Earth. So I'm not really going to discuss anything about page object model in detail at least in theoretical part because we have already discussed about page object model a lot for selenium in both java as well as in c sharp so i am directly going to jump into the code and i'm going to start writing it so that we don't have to really waste time in discussing the same thing which we have already discussed in our exit automation channel so for that i'm going to flip to intellij so this is the same project which we have been working so long in our course and we have been working this code for section 1 and section 2 of Cucumber with Selenium video series. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to add a pages package. So let's call this as pages and within this pages I'm just going to add a class and let's name this Java class as login page. For this particular page, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the objects whichever we created in our login steps.java. As you can see here, we have identified the objects of the controls. For instance, identifying the object for the username and password over here. Similarly, for clicking the login button, we have the object over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to move all these objects from the steps to the pages class. And the reason why I'm doing is we don't really have to mix anything from steps to the pages because steps definition is something which will basically do the assertions. So you can have an assertion there. You can call the methods which is available in login page. So all the business logic for performing the operation and verifying the business logic of an application can be done in the login steps or the step definitions. But handling how the UI element is rendered, how to perform an action on the UI object has to be done only in the pages, which is nothing but the login pages. That's why the page object model is very, very helpful because you place all the objects of an UI in one single class file. And it is very easy for you to maintain the particular class file so that you can always go back and change this class file if there is any change in the UI of the application. If it is not really making any sense, please go ahead and watch the page object model videos we have discussed already in Excel Automation channel in much greater detailed way. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm not really going to dig a deep dive into the page object model as well because we have already discussed that. Rather, my intention for this particular video is to make you understand how we can make use of page object models so that we can make use that in step definitions of Cucumber, right? So that is the main intention. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create some of the pages by adding the attributes. So the first thing is I'm going to add a public web element of let's say txt username and we need to add a a attribute called as find by and this find by actually has some of the unsets called how and within this how you can specify how dot how do you want to identify the particular control so if you want to identify the control using the name then you can specify the name here or by ID then you can specify the ID here so basically we have identified everything using the name so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to specify how dot name and we can just add the reference and then we can use the usings is equal to username right so this will actually perform the this will identify this particular control txt username using its name property right so i'm just going to save that and we're getting some error there it says cannot resolve the symbol so okay name is in caps out there and let's copy this line and let's paste it so that I don't really have to waste my time and this is going to be password which I know that and the submit button has a name of login right so please go ahead and watch the previous video so that you can understand clearly what I'm doing right now how we identified those controls right so txt 
password and btn login right so we have everything in place right here so i'm just going to save it and then let's say i'm going to write a method here so i'm going to say like public void login so basically this is going to be a page navigation concept but i'm really not going to deep dive into the page navigation as well because we have already discussed about that so i'm just going to leave it as it is for now and i'm just going to perform the operation using the methods which i'm creating so i'm just going to create a method with login name and i'm going to perform the login operation out there so txt username dot send keys of this and txt password of send keys of the password All right and then public void click login is the button that we are we're going to click so login dot submit All right i'm just going to save it for now and once i go back to the login step here what i can do is i can void these things i can completely remove these operation here and instead of calling these things right now i can just call the method which is available in the pages again the page object model while you try to call any of these pages you need to call that particular page by creating an object of it so login page page is equal to new of login page and you need to specify the method name here so page dot login and you need to specify the user dot username and user dot password to pass them as a parameter and now we can see that the object identification is moved into the pages rather the step definition right and this will again cause me to write the same line of code here and i'm just going to say page dot click login so now everything is done but the last thing which i need to do is to initialize the page objects as well so that is very very important but most of the time everybody forgets so i'm going to do that control insert and a constructor and i'm just gonna just gonna hit okay uh instead of this web element of these things here I'm just going to say maybe I need the driver object. So what I'm going to do is for now, uh, maybe a bad coding practice. I'm just going to specify the driver here. And then there is something called as page factory. So within this page factory, you can initialize all the elements by calling uh, this particular constructor. So driver of this means it's going to initialize this particular page and since we have a constructor out there you need to specify this as well base dot driver and base dot driver for this method i hope everything is looking correctly right now so if i try to run this the test should run as expected meaning it should open the browser it should enter the username and password and it should click the login button and then perform the operation the only change we have made right now is very very simple we just move all the objects from the step definitions to the page object all right so it's entering username and password and it's performing the intended operation which is cool so this is how you can write a page object model for the selenium code and you can move all the pages object from the step definitions into a pages something like this much maintainable and then perform the operation right so that's it guys once again thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day